Lynn is a victim of rape. She was held at knife point for two hours and subjected to a series of violent sexual assaults. Her attacker said he'd kill her if she resisted. He was caught later and admitted the rape to the police, but he was never prosecuted for it. There's no justice at all. He had the best of solicitors, the best help available and everything. He's on his feet now. I'm still suffering. I'm still going through my trauma. He's not. Lynn lives with her parents now. She was forced to leave her own home. A court ordered her to give it up to the man who raped her at knife point and threatened to kill her. He was her husband. And under English law, it's not a crime for a man to rape his wife. The public face of marriage, a union of loving equals. But tonight we go behind the bedroom door to investigate what's really happening in some marriages. Rape. The scriptures teach us that marriage is a gift of God in creation. And a World in Action has commissioned the first ever national survey of the rape the law ignores. We questioned a representative sample of a thousand married women. They came from every class and walk of life, and revealed for the first time the disturbing truth about violence in the marriage bed. Marriage is given that husband and wife may comfort and help each other. It is given that with delight and tenderness they may know each other in love, and through the joy of their bodily union, may strengthen the union of their hearts and lives. I would never cry when he beat me, no matter how much he hurt me. I couldn't cry, there weren't any tears there. But as soon as the, the, the second that the rape began, you know, I would cry. And it was as though my spirit had broken then. You know, there just wasn't anything of me left. It, it was as though I was being made to pay. As though I'd done something terribly wrong and this was a, a sentence I was serving. I couldn't explain to anyone. I couldn't say to my next door neighbour, help me. My husband's doing these awful things to me. I couldn't... The shame was too much. Susan... Our you... questions to women, drawn up by the Centre for Criminology at Middlesex Polytechnic, made clear that we were not asking about the common experience in marriage when either husband or wife doesn't feel like having sex. I will. We were asking about times when a husband made his wife have sex against her will when she'd clearly refused her consent, the legal definition of rape. 14% of women said they had been forced to have sex by their husbands, one woman in seven. 5% said they'd done so under direct threat of violence. And 4% said violence was actually used by their husbands. If these figures went across Britain, it would mean that more than a million women have been raped in their own homes. Our survey indicates that rape in marriage is a common problem does that concern you as a police officer? Yes, it does. Um, I'm concerned for any kind of victim, especially a victim of serious sexual assault. My worry as a professional is what can actually be done about that using our present criminal justice system, and I'm not sure that that much can. Justice may be portrayed as a woman, but it has traditionally been male when it comes to rape in marriage. In English law, a woman consents to sex by getting married, and she can't refuse it. I think it goes back to the Victorian days when you just lay back and think of England and it was your duty. When they get married and they've got a marriage certificate, they automatically believe that they have got the right to own that woman, body and soul. This could be the scene of a crime in one of Agatha Christie's Miss Marple stories. Instead, it's the scene of a crime which the law says never happened, rape in marriage. This was the home of an RAC patrolman and his wife. Their marriage was on the rocks when one evening he attacked her. Thinking back now, I wish I'd never done it. I went to the toilet and I never locked the door. And that's where he came in with a knife and made me strip on the toilet. What did he do then? Uh, he kept the knife in my, you know, pointing into my body the whole time, the whole time the ordeal took place. Um, he made me strip. Then he made me... Um, I'm not quite sure whether we went into the bedroom first or whether we went into the living room and he made me pour out two big tumblers of drink 
and um, it's in fact I couldn't open the the plastic coke bottle, and he got the knife and just slashed the top off, and then um, for, uh, to make me take a drink. Um, he said it was for what's to come, you know, to take the taste away. And um, he, with a knife in me, he forced me into the bedroom. And um, the first thing he made me do was um, have oral sex with him. And I was gagging and choking and urging. I was nearly sick. And he threatened me again. He said, if, you know, if you don't stop that, um, I'm going to kill you. But I couldn't help it. I was going to be sick all over him if he continued. And um, then he forced me onto the bed and, and raped me. I remember being taken to the station. I was there for hours. And and uh, then I came back to my parents' place. And um, I yeah. just had to get into the bath. I just just couldn't, you know, couldn't think of anything more but just getting into the bath. Did he admit that he'd raped his wife? Yes, he did. So how did you feel as a police officer that you had a woman in a terrible state and a man admitting he'd raped her at knife point, but you couldn't charge him with rape? Well, the, the question was, uh, at the time, uh, we considered that um, the punishment or the charges didn't fit the crime. But her hands were tied. I'm like one in a million. I'm ignorant of the law. I didn't know, really, whether he could be charged with, with rape or not. But at the same time, that's what it was. I don't mind that bit so much. If they'd not been married, Lynn's husband could have faced years in jail for rape. As it was, he served 14 months, not for the rape, but because forced oral intercourse is an indecent assault. On release, he got a court order evicting Lynn from their house. Well, I've lost my home. I've had to move back to Torquay. Um, as I say, I've thrown myself into my work and to my animals. Um, I've got no social life. I don't dress up or anything like that. I just try and, try and live a quiet life, whereas it's not really me. But my husband, he's got our home, he's building up his life, he's, as far as I know, um, earning his money, and he's got what he's always wanted. So, really, I'm a loser. St Albans Crown Court, the scene earlier this year of an even more remarkable case. The man involved had a long history of violence, and his wife is too frightened to appear. But these are her words. We didn't get on, slept separately. One evening my husband called to me to come and see something. I went in. He was standing holding the Reader's Digest Guide to Law, open on the page about rape. He grabbed both my arms and twisted them painfully. He said, I'm getting you. He said it was his right. I was trying to struggle free. All the time he was glaring at me. He twisted me round and threw me down and, and raped me. What Anne's husband had read in the law guide before he raped her was... The man cannot be accused of raping the wife, no matter how much she may have fought off his advances. In the end, Anne's husband was ordered to serve 150 hours in the community because he bruised her during the rape. I, David, take you, Susan, to be my wife. I, David, take you, Susan, to be my wife. Our survey revealed that violence is a regular feature of British family life. Nearly a third of the thousand women we spoke to had been hit by their husbands. And these assaults were much more common in lower income groups. And in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. Rape in marriage was also more common in lower income groups. 14% of all women had been raped, one in seven. But that rose to 23%, more than one woman in five in less well off families. All I wanted to do was go to sleep. But he decided that he wanted sex. Being so tired, I just didn't... All I wanted to do was just close my eyes and just catch up from the night before. So I said, no, I'm tired. So he said, well, that doesn't matter. I said, no, I don't want to do I'm tired. But he just insisted and... He went ahead and did it. Marie divorced the husband whose sexual attacks finally landed her in hospital. But the memories of those times have never left her. It was a nightmare. The only way I can describe it is as though I was outside looking in on myself. It'd start to hit me if I refused sex. 
This went from what you can say is bad to worse, whereby the violence got really to the extreme. At first you try and resist and then it becomes easier on yourself if you say, well, just let him get on with it. So did you sometimes have sex with him because you were afraid he would use violence if he, yes. di if he didn't? Yes. How did that make you feel about yourself? Well, it makes you feel inhuman. You feel degraded. You feel, why, why me? Why, why am I here? Why, why can't it just be normal? I, Susan, take you, David, to be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. Our survey found that husbands are likely to be the most dangerous men in women's lives. A woman has a far greater likelihood of being raped by her husband than by anyone else. Rape in marriage is seven times more common than rape by a stranger. To love, cherish and obey. Till death us do part. Till death do us part. Altogether, more than a fifth of women, 22%, said that at some time in their life they'd been forced to have sex against their will. 2% had been raped by strangers, 6% by boyfriends, 6% by someone else, and 14% by their husbands. The English may have an image of a Scotland where the male is supreme, but this is the only country in the British Isles where it's a crime for a man to rape his wife. In February, Scotland changed its law so that men who rape their wives now face jail, creating a major legal anomaly in the justice system of Great Britain. This is the man whose case changed the law, the first man in the United Kingdom to be charged with raping his wife while they lived together. Although his case was found not proven, it was a legal landmark. There was a lot of so-called evidence against me. I was supposed to have used handcuffs, climbing ropes, etc. to subdue my wife. And even with all that so-called evidence against me, it proved to collapse in the court. Now, if it was just a man forcing his wife to have sex without using any other aids, it would collapse even quicker. So you think such cases are very difficult to prove one way or another? Not difficult. I would say impossible. How do you think that this new legal state of affairs could be used by some women in the future? I think some women that are fed up of marriage, want rid of their husbands, or just living partners, could cry rape to get the man sent away so they could have their, their freedom again. Now, a man forcing his wife, a husband forcing his wife into sex, a stranger raping uh, a woman with a knife, ultimately, what's the difference? A very big difference. The last thing I ever thought I would ever be charged with, with rape, I wouldn't contemplate raping another strange person, lady. But I think... A man that has lived with his wife for many years, bad love umpteen times, to prove he has raped her or whatever is impossible. Would you imagine that judges would hand out lower sentences to men who had raped their wives than to men who had attacked women in the street and raped them? No, I don't think that the, the judges uh, will have a different tariff uh, for uh, rape uh, by husbands on wives. Again, because in the end of the day, if the jury convict of rape, it is the crime of rape of which they've convicted, and the judge will approach it in the same way he will approach any other case of rape. Of course, on any occasion when he's sentencing, a judge uh, will take into account all the circumstances of the offence in deciding what is the appropriate uh, punishment to impose. He will do that in any case of rape, or indeed in any case at all. And a violent, a very violent and terrifying rape may attract, of course, a longer sentence than a less violent and less terrifying rape. But that applies whether the rape occurs within marriage or outside of marriage. So would it be possible in Scotland now that a man found guilty of raping his wife could be sent to prison for 10 years or even for life? Well, it, it the circumstances were so extreme as to justify sentences of those kinds, then I've no doubt that such sentences uh, would be imposed. Yes. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. Scottish women have the protection of the law, but will they use it? Our survey found that women are hiding the truth about their husband's violence. 
more than half the women raped by their husbands had never told anybody what was happening behind closed doors. Holy Spirit. Nearly half, 45%, had been to their doctors with symptoms caused by the rape, without admitting the real cause of the problem. 11% were physically injured, but only 2% had been to the police. Fair to state that, you know, for generations we have prosecuted rapists successfully. But over these last few years, we have tried to look at the needs of victims in particular. And we have now seen that it is our role not only to prosecute offenders, but to mitigate the effects of the crime on the victim. But victims of rape in marriage rarely ask for help. Sergeant Jane Noble, who works in a police unit specially set up to deal with domestic violence, could offer legal yes. and practical assistance. But in our survey, two out of five women who had been forced by their husbands to have sex didn't even define this experience as rape. It happens quite regularly and it's something that they accept as um, part of their marriage and part of the, the life within the home. So they don't see their husbands forcing them to have sex as rape or as a crime? No, it's not until, I mean, once they've <clears throat> told you what goes on and you say to them, well, do you realise what he's doing? And then they seem to sort of take two steps back and think, oh, well, my God, yes, that is what he's doing. But they don't seem to pick it up immediately. They don't associate what's happening to them as a, a rape within, you know, within their home. The day that we were married, and it was because I disagreed to go somewhere where he wanted to go. And he hit me. I really don't know how it led to the rape. I just know that it did. Did you realise then that it was rape? Well, I wouldn't have used the word rape, but I knew that I didn't want to have sex with him and he knew that I was going to have sex with him. Sue now counsels victims of violence. Like two-fifths of victims in our survey, she was raped Hello. many times by her ex-husband. It became a regular thing, really. Um, he was a very aggressive, violent man. And when he was violent, it always ended in rape. I felt very dirty, very upset, and I wondered what I'd done to deserve it. I didn't feel that I had any right to, to make decisions or to, to have a choice in things that we did together. Did you think that you had the right to say no? I knew I had the right to say no, but... I don't say no. Men who force their wives to have sex often don't see it as anything wrong. This is Kevin. He's a social worker and he used to force his wife to have sex when he was drunk. At that period of time in my life, I, um, I expected my wife to, yeah, to, to make love to me. As long as I enjoyed myself, um, that was OK. I, I only thought of myself. I felt that um, that was part of the marriage agreement. Did you begin to force sex upon your wife without her consent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In quite a lot, of, quite a lot of times. Um, but it was usually um, coming back from the pub, pie-eyed, and wanting sex. And then yeah, it would be. Um, there'd be a, a bit of a fight, a bit of a skirmish. Um, but usually. It would turn into to making love, yeah. The law defines rape as sex without consent. Sex without consent, the law defines sex without consent. Then, possibly, um, I had raped my wife. Um, but only, only her would be able to answer that. Um, I never felt at one time that I'd raped my wife and never will, I don't suppose. If you'd behaved this way outside of a marriage, what do you think would have happened to you? My behaviour outside of the marriage would have been... I would have been locked away um, because I, I behaved like an animal in the, in the marriage. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body. The key argument against making rape in marriage a crime is that it's not a grave offence like rape by a stranger. That was the view taken by the majority of the government-appointed Criminal Law Revision Committee. We asked a thousand married women in Britain what they thought. Son and Holy Spirit. 
12% thought rape by a stranger was worse than rape by a husband. But 84% thought both offences were equally serious. So four out of five women think rape in marriage is as bad as rape by a stranger. The chairman of the Criminal Law Revision Committee disagrees with them. It's the quality of the act which is entirely different. A woman who is raped outside marriage almost certainly has never had sexual intercourse with her assailant. Very often she's never seen her assailant before. And that kind of conduct must be a violation of her personality. To use an old expression, it's an assault upon her honour. Intercourse without consent inside marriage is a very different matter altogether. The woman will have had sexual intercourse with her husband many times, probably for many years. And then on one occasion, she decides to say no. She may have a very good reason for saying it. She may have a trivial reason for saying it. Uh, and uh, she's upset by what has happened. Uh, but the quality of her, uh, her disturbance can't be compared with that of a case of a woman who's been raped outside marriage. I think it's worse. I really think it's... I've never been raped by a stranger. Um, but a stranger, I, mean, I would imagine perhaps that you wouldn't see your attacker, you wouldn't see his face very clearly to you. I think it would be easier to get over in a way. But when it's, it's a, um, your husband, that's somebody that once upon a time you made love with, and then he turned, he turned into a stranger, but you knew his face so well and you saw his eyes. And, and once when that person was loving towards you and then he treated you like that, well, it's awful. I think it's something you'll never, ever get over. You've got to live with that person 24 hours a day, eat with them, sleep with them, be with them, knowing what they've done to you. You wouldn't forget a rape with a stranger, but you don't have to look at him all the time. How do you know that rape by a husband isn't as bad as rape by a stranger. Using my common sense and my knowledge of life. Because some women that we've talked to say that they've been terrified or degraded by their husbands and in their view that experience was every bit as bad as being raped by well, a stranger, if, if not worse. Well, I just don't accept it. The Law Commission recently brought out a new draft legal code for England and Wales. Under it, rape in marriage remains a non-crime, unless the couple is separated in some way. We asked the representative sample of a thousand British married women what they thought. The vast majority said the current law on rape in marriage is wrong. 96% of the married women we talked to said the law should be changed. We wanted to put the results of our survey to Junior Home Office Minister John Patton because he's gone on record about his concern over rape. He declined to be interviewed. There must be many people, many women, that need help. And they can't even admit to themselves that rape is taking place. And if they just sit and think about it, I'm sure that they will admit that, yes, that has happened to me. If there was a woman watching now in the sort of position that you used to be in, what would you say to her? Tell someone. Tell someone that's going, what, what, what's going on in your life. Let someone know. Today, we delivered the results of our survey to the Home Office. We marked in red the call from 96% of women for the English law to be changed to make rape in marriage a crime. <laughs>